it's really useful to be able to enter data directly in Power BI, but it doesn't always work. So if you click on here and then you paste from existing data, then you often get this. It says it needs to be less than 3,000 cells, otherwise it won't really work. However, in this video, I'm going to show you how to get data from much, much bigger sets than that. We're going to start with 350 rows, then 3,000 rows, not 3,000 cells, but rows. Then we're going to go up to 12K rows, 20K rows, and <laughs> 1 million rows won't work, unfortunately, but we will get these working. So my name is David Benheim, and I have tons of videos on Excel, PowerPoint, Power BI, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams. If you're using Tech of the Workplace, and I'm covering on my channel. I love talking about the new stuff. So give me a like on this video if you learned something new. So let's get started. So let's do the first base case, 350 rows, and here I have cell count and row count. Uh, in this example, I'll do it with kind of dates that work, but I will show you how to troubleshoot certain things. So I'm going to select the entire table, and I'm going to right-click and copy it, and I'm going to go to Power BI, and then here I'm going to click on this one, then I'm going to click in the header and paste. I'm going to say 350 rows, enter, there we go. And now what I can do is I can choose, for example, branch and amount AMT like this, and I can change it to whatever I want, and I get these charts that come out of it. So that does work. The date is showing me in the right way, so I can even do date and amount, for example, and then I can put that in a line chart and I get it first by year and then I can drill down. These are the defaults. Uh, I often don't have the defaults, but you can change them if you want to, but this is the cleanest, easiest way to do it if your Power BI skills are not most elevated. All right, so that's worked and let's go to the next one. So let's show you for the next one, 3000 rows. This won't work because here there's actually 23,000 cells and almost 3000 rows. But what we're going to be able to do is get this working by essentially making each row into one cell. So to do that, in Excel, we're going to use a function called text join. Text join will combine all of the entire row into a single cell. So we're going to give it a delimiter. Choose here a combination of characters that you would never do in real life and put them in speech marks. So you do need to wrap every delimiter in speech marks because that's how you do text in Excel. But I'm going to do this pipe symbol and then the tilde because you're never going to write that naturally. And then ignore empty. I'm going to do false because even if there are cells, I don't want everything shifted across. And then comma. And I'm going to select all of these cells like that. Close my brackets and then press enter. And then this is how the row looks. I can do it for the header as well, like this. And then I'm going to fill it down. So select all these cells and then control D will fill it down like this. And then I'm going to select this. I'm going to right click and choose to copy it. And then I'm going to enter data. You can get to it this way. If you don't have a blank page from a blank report, you can get to it this way. You can also get to it when you're in transform data. And then I'm going to here, I'm going to paste now, it might take a little bit of time, but eventually you'll get there, and let's call this 3,000 rows. Then press enter, and then it loads it up. But it loads it up like this, where everything is in one cell. So that's not really what you want. So we're going to edit the query. Uh, we can click on this, these three dots and choose Edit Query, or we can go to Transform Data in the Home tab as well. So this is how it looks. You can see that it's promoted my headers, which is not something that I want. So I'm going to do some changes in the Power Query Editor. And this may be new for you, but I'm going to go through the simple steps. Click here and choose Use Headers as First Row to get those demoted. And then here we're going to split column by delimiter. So the, the delimiter that we added in text join, which are these two characters, we're going to use them to split it, press OK. And here they are. And then we're going to go to Use Headers as First Row. And then it has detected our data types, which are these ones are numbers. Um, but for data, it hasn't quite worked. We're going to look at how to fix dates a little bit later in this video, and also how to fix blanks and error cells as well. But for now, this is what we're going to do, even though we know that the dates don't work, and I'm going to close and apply. And now it's loaded up again. So again, I can do, for example, brand and amount and make that into this chart, and it will work pretty well. All right, so let's go to the next level with even more rows. So with 12K rows, and I have done trial and error to see how this works, uh, we're going to, well, first we have this text join that we already did last time to get it looking like this. And then I've actually gotten the next level. So the next level is we're going to text join, not just with each cell being one row, but each cell is going to be multiple rows. So to show you here, when it gets to the end of the row, it actually does this close curly bracket, open curly bracket to imply that it goes to the next row. And the text join is combining it with that symbol. And it's doing this between rows five and 350, and then in increments of 350, um, I just did trial and error because there is a character count for how many cells that you do. For example, here, if I switch this to, say, 500, then yeah, I would get this calc error, and these are in increments of 500 now, so it doesn't quite work because you can't have more than a certain number of characters in a cell in Excel for this to work. So 350 for this kind of data is something that worked. If you have different kinds of data with fewer columns or more columns, then it would maybe vary slightly. Uh, in this case, I've got my dates working because the dates are stored as text. As I said, I'll show you how to do the dates later on this video, but I'm first going to show you how to do this. All right, so let me uh, just in insert a bunch of 
line columns here. So I'm going to write here 5 and 350. 5 because that is the first row where my data starts, and 350 because that's what we uh, agreed we'd be able to work out as a maximum. So in the next cell below 5, I'm going to write equals and click on the cell with 350. And the one that says 350, I'm going to write equals this one plus 350 above, which is the increment. I'm going to press F4 to lock that in because I don't want the next one to add 700, etc. So now I'm going to click on these two cells and I'm going to drag them down. And here it's gone up to 23,000. We're going to see that it doesn't work with that much, but uh, this is enough for now. So this is going to be start and this is going to be increments. And then I'm going to do a formula that is going to combine all the rows from row 5 to row 350 using these cells, not using these cells after I've already converted them. So let's see. So here I'm going to write equals text join. And again, choose something that is completely different to what you do. I'm going to choose close curly brackets, open curly brackets to imply a new row. Uh, and you would never do them in that succession. It would be so, so rare. So that's why I've done it there. Then ignore empty. Always do false for this kind of thing. Although true is very useful for a lot of other use cases. And then I want to start from K5 until K350. So I can write K5, K350 like this. Close my brackets and then it will work. Uh, as you can see, it closes my curly brackets, open curly brackets for the next one. And I can even say equals len, just to check how many characters there are. That's what len does. There are 26,000 characters in the cell. But actually, if I went to 450, it wouldn't work. And the sweet pot, spot that I worked out is 32,000 characters will work. Anything below that will not. So 410 will be fine. 420 will be above that. Or 32,384 will work. There we go. But to keep it consistent working on every row, then 350 is a good place to go here. But instead of hard coding in K5, to K350, I'm going to actually replace that with a formula. So what I mean by that is I'm going to link this to the cells. So you can in Excel do these speech marks around text and combine that with cells. So I'm going to write equals K and five for now. And then I'm going to say, and speech marks, the way you do in Excel is with this colon and then K again, close speech marks and, and then click on this cell and then close my brackets, and then it will not work. It will just give me this because that's what's in these cells. However, you can convert cell references to text using the indirect function. If I write indirect here around my values to take in my text one field, my indirect will work here. And now it has worked the way that I want it to work. So now I can just drag this down like that, calc if there's nothing there. And this is the symbol that's going to give me if there's no data underneath there. But until here it works because uh, my data is going up to about, if I press control and down arrow, the last cell is 16,000. So I have gone too far, which I already knew, but it's going to work like this. Then in the top cell, I'm just going to say equal to and the header row. The header row is unadjusted. So there is no curly brackets in the header row. And now I'm going to click on this. And if I go to this level of 16,000 and I copy it back to Power BI, then I'm going to go to enter data. And I'm going to paste. It's actually going to look like it works, but if I go to edit or if I click load, it's going to say it didn't work. So even though the character limit is under 3000, there is too much data in it that it doesn't work. So I'm going to press cancel and yes, lose my changes. And I'm going to go just up to 12,000 because for this number of columns of data, that's why I worked out it would work this one to 250. So I'm going to copy that and go back to Power BI and enter data. And here I'm going to paste. Now that is a lot faster than the other one. So this is 12K rows. And I'm going to undo headers because I want to split them anyway. So you can click that there. And then edit will take you directly to the Power Query editor. And I'm going to split it. But first, I'm going to split it by these curly brackets. And then I'm going to split it by the other cells. So click on that and then split column, split by delimiter. And I'm going to choose that one, close and then open. And then advanced options, I'm going to split into rows. Press OK. And now you can see I've got 999 rows. Uh, but I'm first going to split the column by delimiter again, and I'm going to choose the same thing we did earlier. And this is going to stay as columns, press OK. And now I can use headers as first row. And it should automatically convert my data types. Uh, it's worked for the date there, but notice that this tells me I do have two errors, annoyingly. But it has mostly worked there. I can go to transform and I can choose to count rows if I want to see how many rows there are. 12 to 80, so almost 13,000. That's great. So that's really great. And then I can load it and it will work. But let's look at how to deal with the dates. So what I like to do if I see an error is just keep those errors just temporarily and see what they are. So if you click in here, you go to keep errors. And then that will filter and only show you the data with errors. So if I click on each cell, it shows me that these are actually US style dates, which somehow got into that. 
I did it deliberately just to show you this thing. <laughs> but um, this is the kind of thing that you do have to fix in the source data if you want it working. Or in this case, what we're going to do is we can actually remove the errors. I can click on here and I can choose remove errors. All the other cells don't have errors in them. Some of them have blanks in them. So how you deal with the blanks usually is you replace the blanks with null values. That's the better way to deal with blanks. Power Query has two different types of blanks. Um, it shows you here how many empty cells there are. There are two and valid ones here as well. So Power Query usually will prefer to work with, with the blanks that actually say the word blank rather than, let's say the word null, rather than there's just these things that are blanks. So if you go back to an early step, kind of after we, before we change the type, that will probably be the best way because here they're all text. And I click on the three cells that have this kind of gray thing appearing, but I can even do it on all the cells. So Control A will select all of the columns. I can go to transform and I can replace values and I can say replace, leave that blank. And then the second one, write the word null in the lower case. And then look what it's done. It's done this. It puts in italic, which means the Power Query recognizes it as a null. And I go to my last cell and it has still worked. It's showing me like that still because they are still empty cells, but they are managing nulls in the better way. So now here I can go to close and apply. By the way, the last steps you only need to do if you have errors or blank value. And there you go. Now we've done it with 12K. So here I can say, well, what is the account type and the calc say like that, and it has worked. And the dates are showing me like this, which means that Power BI is recognizing them as the true dates. If you are a more advanced Power Query user and Power BI user, then you might want to disable this feature. But in this case, it's good. You might also want to disable the automatic data type pickup in the Power Query editor. But in this case, we're allowing it to speed up the process. All right, so that's 12K rows. Now what about 20K rows? Well, what we're gonna do is we're going to not necessarily do 20K rows, I'm going to do it with these other rows over here. So with these cells, I'm going to right click and copy them because we know that they didn't work in the last cell. And here I'm going to write enter data again. And I'm going to paste. And it's put them up there. So undo headers and edits after 12K rows. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do all the same steps. So split column first by that and that, and then into rows, and then that and that into columns. Now that I don't have any headers, but that's okay in this example because we do have the same kinds of headers. So here I'm going to not load this data because this is going to be prep. This is not all of my data. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this data and over here, um, if I go to a previous step, so this one, I can see that I have column 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, etc. And I want to combine those. So I'm actually going to uh, split my query. So I have one query that is after this and one query that is before that step. So in the change type, I'm going to right click and I'm going to choose extract previous. I'm going to give this a name. So this is going to be 12K staging. That's okay. And what that does is it gives me the first query, which gets up to this stage, and the later part does what I need to do to load the 12K. Note that I only need to do that stage to show you this example, because these are my two different data tables. So I'm going to right-click on that one and untick enable load, untick enable load, because these two are not loading. They're just prepping before I combine them in Power Query. So 12K staging, uh, I'm actually going to go to the Home tab, and in Append Queries, I'm going to choose Append Queries as new. And Append Queries means basically stack them on top of each other. So 12K staging and after 12K rows, and press OK. And then it's called append one and it looks like this and i have all of my data in the right place my headers are over here so use first row's headers and then it changes the type i will need to fix my data errors but i'm going to do uh, rename this so this is going to be up to 20k rows and again this could be longer depending how many columns you have how much data is in them so it does really differ but in my case it would work for up to say 24k because 12k worked in the same way go to your filters and load more and we do want to take out the blanks. So if I go to null, I can see there's a lot of rows with just null in them. So I actually want to do the other way and I want to filter out and remove empty because those are the rows that I don't need. And then I can press close and apply. And it has worked, but it's showing me up to 20K. It does have 12 errors. So you can go to view errors. I tend to not do it this way. And I manage the errors directly in Power Query. This will create new queries and make it complicated. I have another video where I talk about how to manage queries and errors inside Power Query, which is really, really good. But for now, I'm going to press close and I have here up to 20K rows. And let's have the date. Some of these are showing me as errors and they will not necessarily work, but I can still do that in a line chart like that and it will show me my data. All right, so that's how you do it. But let's look at what happened in the second thing we uploaded, had the dates that don't have this symbol, which means that Power Query hasn't recognized them as dates. And that's because they were showing as numbers. So let's look at how to fix that. So if I go to the 3K rows example, so here my dates are being stored as dates. 
apart from this one, which is US format. Um, and if I look at my text drawing formula, it's converted that to 42105. And that is because if I select these and I go to my home tab and I format these in general, they are actually just numbers. So in Excel, dates are just numbers that look differently to us, which is which is done so that I can use dates inside calculations. So I can say equals that one minus that one, press enter. I can see there's 191 days between those. And that's kind of why Excel does it. But in this case, we want to keep them as dates because Power Query can't convert them back from these numbers to dates. So what we need to do is we need to do another function. So I'm going to insert a column here. I'm going to write equals text. So text will convert these into a text value with a certain format. So comma and then format text, I'm going to write in speech marks, dd, mmm, yy. This is day day, three characters for months and then two for year. And what that does is it does it like this. Note that if I did two characters for a month, it would show it to me in the numbers like that. Um, I do the letters because I think it's just the most clear. And notice they align on the left side rather than the right side because it is text. Anything that's a number or a date will auto align on the right side. You can adjust that here, but that's just how the defaults are. So I can just double click to lock that in. Note that for this one, it hasn't changed it. And that is because this is incorrectly not a date. Uh, I'm going to call this date text. And then if I, in the data tab, put my filters back on, I can filter that. And then I can see these two are the ones that are not going to be in the dates because the filter doesn't group them into years and months. So I'm going to actually just select those and select my blanks. So my blanks, it converts them to this. So I actually want to manually change that. I can delete it. I could put an if formula if I wanted to make it more robust. In this case, I'm just going to do that. I'm going to switch these out because you can't change them inside Power Query because they honestly are just text values and not dates. So there you go. Now they have worked. And then I can take off my filters, add them back, and just check the numbers if there's any. There I've got an error that says value. So when you have an error that says value, your Power Query will also give you a value. So make sure that you avoid those. For example, here I'm going to write zero and then my Power Query does work. And then here, filter and filter back. This cell as well. Here I have some text, <laughs> some 9,800, because someone hadn't written it. Make sure you change these before you get to Power Query. I don't think anyone would ever do that, but <laughs> if you did this, well, let's, let's not change it and see how Power Query deals with it. So now I'm going to, in my formula column uh, over here, instead of these cells, I'm going to write A5 to say this one, F5, and then I can press a comma and do the next one, and that's going to be the date, and a comma, and then this one, and that's going to be this cell. And then press enter, then I can double click to drag that down and then drag it up as well, so my headers match that selection. And I'm going to select my cells, control shift down to select them till the end, copy, go back to Power Query, and then I can just click on transform data, and I'm gonna first show you what's gone wrong. So in the 3000 rows, is now showing my dates like this, except for these ones that are in error. But if I go to enter data, you can get to it directly from here as well. You can right click and paste. Now it's on that, undo headers. So 3K with dates working, press okay. And then if I go through my regular motions that we've covered so many times already, so pipe in that one, and press okay. And then use first row as headers. Here we go to working. Let's look at the dates. Look what it's done. It's converted those to dates, even though they are text values, we can rename it. And this is just going to be dates. And here I have the error, so I can click on that. And I can keep the errors to see what it is. And that is my 9800. So as I said, try and avoid this. Um, in this case, I'm going to go to transform and replace values, replace errors, and replace that with 9800. But do it in your source data just to be sure. And then once you're done, you can press close and load. And then you've got it, 3K working with dates. There's the dates field working there. So I did go up to 20K rows, but this append trick could work on many, many more because in append queries, you can actually say you wanted to append three or more tables and you can just append as many as you want over here. So it can work with a lot more than 20K rows, but obviously it's going to be very, very tedious to have to do them individual tables and load it up there. But you may be better off just getting data from an Excel file. To remind you how to do that, you can go to Excel workbook, then you navigate to where the file is and get data from there. Or you can get data and choose more. And this is typically the way that I do it. And then you get this popping up. And typically I will do it from folder because from folder you can expand it. And even if it's just one Excel file, it means that you're not sensitive to the name of the Excel workbook changing. Whereas if you do just from Excel workbook, then it does try and find the exact hard-coded file name. Same with text CSV file. I tend to go through folder first. I have another video where I go into very much detail about how to do that. But if you just want one file, then it's pretty straightforward.
can also get PDF or you can get loads and loads of other data sources if you like. All right, so that's what I wanted to show you for this video. So I hope you found it useful. My name is David Benayim and I have tons of videos on Power BI, Excel, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams. If you're using Tech of the Workplace, I'm coming on my channel. So subscribe if you want to see more information like this.